Guys, what sounds like more fun than living and traveling full-time in a converted school bus? Uh, living and traveling full-time in a converted school bus with a real cute cat and dog. Hello, guys! Hi, it's me, Jeffrey. <laughs> Hi there. Yeah, it's my Christmas tree is still up. I, you know what? I'm not in Earl now. Uh, while it's so cold and I'm still not insulated, I know I'm gonna hear all about it. It's ordered. Like it's. It, I'm gonna get on top of it. I promise. Um, but in the meantime, I uh, I haven't gotten my Christmas tree down. <laughs> I'll do it. You, you guys don't care, but I am going to get it taken down. Hey, what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about uh, pets. I'm waiting for some supplies to arrive. I don't really have anything. Well, that's not true. I have a gazillion things I could do. But I don't have an uh, awesome project to start on right now. So um, I thought I'd talk about my pets. And this is going to be part one of two videos. This is how do I think it's going to be uh, living in a school bus and traveling full time with two pets. Uh, once I'm on the road, I'll do the second video, which will be the realities <laughs> of living in a school bus, traveling full time with two pets. I have a feeling there are going to be some differences, but I have really thought this out. I think I have a plan, so let me tell you about that plan. Okay, so uh, the first thing is, what pets do I have? Well, you know Leroy. I have a dog, a real cute little dog named Leroy. I also have a putty cat named Patty, and they're polar opposites. Their personalities could not be uh, more dissimilar. <laughs> they are completely different. Uh, Leroy, when I'm living in Earl, which I think I'm going to be able to pop back out here for the next few weeks it's supposed to be pretty warm and by pretty warm I mean like only like a low of 22 degrees <laughs> but that's warm enough for me to be out here which by the way it's negative four right now so <laughs> it's pretty chilly um uh where was I Oh, so you've met Leroy. He's been living in the bus. He loves it out here. He loves all the windows. He can see everything that's going on. He absolutely adores it. My cat has still been staying inside my sister's house in the basement. She would not love it right now. She will love it. I'm certain of it. Um, she loves to like watch out windows. She loves, she's, she's going to love it. Um, but she is a little persnickety. <laughs> she also does not like loud noises. She is scared of everything. So uh, the construction noises, she would not be down with, like not even a little bit. Um, and uh, so she's in the house until Earl's a little bit more complete and ready for her to move in. Okay, so let's start with Patty. I'm gonna run inside and uh, grab her. I'm gonna take you with me because she's not gonna be cool with coming outside in the cold and She'll get scared and pee all over me. <laughs> this is my patty. <laughs> She's a cat, <laughs> obviously. Uh, patty is 10 years old. She's persnickety. She likes me a lot. She does not like very many other people, do you? No, you're not. You're not rude, but you're kind of high maintenance. She's kind of a handful. She also has a like, bladder stone issue, which never goes away unless they need surgery. But the surgery is kind of intense, so you don't want to do it unless they need it. She doesn't need it, but essentially that means she's living with bladder stones. So they're controlled, but it does mean that sometimes she has some bladder problems. So it's really important that her litter box is clean and dry and that she can get to it quickly and easily because she doesn't have a lot of time between when she knows she needs to pee and when pee starts coming. <laughs> she also, uh, um, she hasn't had kittens, <laughs> but uh, if she gets scared, she pees her pants immediately. <laughs> I know. I've had her for, how old are you? 10. 10? Yeah, she's 10. She came from my, my parents' pig farm. Uh, her, her mom and her mom's mom and her mom's mom and her aunts I, they were all my favorite cats when I was a little kid. I was obsessed with our farm cats. Um, so I really love that I have her because um, all of her relatives were my, my favorites growing up. And a little, uh, little tidbit about Patty. When Patty was a nine-month-old kitten, 
we went on tour. I was on tour with the uh, touring company of a Broadway show, and she flew with me all over the country every week. <laughs> she would go to a new city with me. We would fly somewhere new. So she's pretty cool. So what accommodations am I making for my pets in Earl? Well, not a lot. Um, a few uh, a few slight alterations. Uh, number one, uh, Leroy is so cute. He's so fun. He's such a blast. He is not necessarily the sharpest tool that you'll find in the shed. <laughs> um, he does not understand that he can jump over barriers. Um, so something as small, which this is actually probably the plan, uh, something as small as this, I think... <laughs> What is that? One by eight? One by ten? Twelve? Twelve? This is one by twelve. This on the floor as a gate, uh, he he thinks he can't jump over it. So I'm planning to put a uh, one of these, either something that um, like folds up and down, or just a piece that I can just slide in. I plan to make a little barrier for him in the front. So if I'm needing to come in and out, or if people are arriving, um, I'll have something there to kind of stop him. Right here, this is my countertop. This is the edge of my countertop. Um, right in here, two things. Number one, right down there towards the bottom, I plan to build in recessed uh, food and drink bowls for Leroy. And uh, Patty has to eat up elevated or Leroy steals her food. So I'll just, her feeding spot will be someplace up somewhere. Um, also, I'm putting a little like, um, I don't really know how to describe it, but a little like thing drawer that folds out, if that makes sense for their food right there. So that's the next accommodation I'm making for them. And then the last really big one um, is the litter box. And the litter box is going, so this is gonna be a little hard to explain, but this is the door into the bathroom. This is a wall. Uh, this is my bed. So underneath here, Inside the bathroom, I'm putting a little door right here. Obviously, these protein shake boxes won't be here. Oh, oh, it's frozen. Oh, wow. I guess I'm not drinking those soon. Um, so my water tanks will not be right there. They'll be a little bit further back. And right here, underneath my bathroom sink, will be a, a little door. And the litter box will be in its own room, its own compartment in here. It will be on wheels so I can open the door, slide it out to scoop it every day. But the one really important feature is that I'm putting a little exhaust fan that will go outside, out through the wall. Um, two things that does. Number one, this is a small space and nobody, especially myself, wants to smell a litter box. <laughs> <laughs> and the other advantage of the exhaust fan is it will keep air moving and it will keep it dry. The more dry a litter box is, the less it smells. Um, so that fan will keep a constant influx of air coming into the litter box compartment and out the side. Or at least that's the plan. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Okay guys, and so this is Leroy. <laughs> Leroy is my dog. He is four. Oh, he's very cold right now. <laughs> he's very cold. Leroy is four, while Patty is calm and chill and quiet and hates loud noises. Oh, it's so cold. I know we're going to go inside. Leroy is the opposite. This dog is wild. He is energetic. He never runs out of energy. He's gone for 20 mile runs with me and, and still wanted more. He is super playful. He is not high maintenance in the same way Patty is, um, but he also is a... Um, a uh, what you call it, a, um, uh, uh, a terrier, a rat terrier breed. And that means that he follows his nose. So uh, he can't go off leash. He cannot be trusted off leash. He will disappear. He'll come back eventually once he's bored, but he will not listen to me. I've tried training him and he just, he can't resist. He can't resist. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is Leroy. A lot easier, a lot more, less high maintenance than Patty, but still a little high maintenance in other ways. Let's go inside. I know. This dog does not have very much fur. He's so cold. Okay, guys, so that is the bulk of the accommodations I am making inside. I'm sure there are going to be other things that I haven't thought of, but those are the basics. The last thing 
is veterinary care. What are my plans for veterinary care? Well, uh, I grew up in a small town on a farm here in Missouri. We all know that. And we have a vet who is amazing. Honey Creek Veterinary Clinic, what, what? <laughs> um, Anyway, uh, Gayla takes amazing care of my pets and I will do uh, all of their regular checkups uh, here. I would not go someplace else unless there's an emergency. That being said, I will have to be ready for an emergency. Um, you know, Patty is getting older, um, so I will have to be flexible. But when it comes to yearly checkups, I'll always come here. Um, one word of advice, I'm going to tell you a story you didn't ask for, <laughs> but if you're traveling, and I mean, I guess I can't speak from authority because, well, that's, no, I can a little bit. I uh, travel all the time, but never in this capacity in a school bus, Reg irregardless. <laughs> that's not a word. I know. Um, I was once in Michigan. I was working uh, there doing a show. I was on a contract there for four or five months and uh, Patty ha got sick. She wouldn't eat. She wouldn't poop. Um, she clearly didn't feel well. She was just lethargic and laying around. So I took her to a vet there and they um, they did x-rays and they're like, well, she has something stuck in her in her colon. She has, she's got like an impacted colon. Something's stuck in there. And the only option is to have surgery. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I don't remember the quote they gave me. It was wild. It was well over a thousand dollars. I think I think it might have been closer to two. I don't remember. Anyway, I called Gayla and I was like, hey, like, you know, this is what's up. Uh, you know, I think I might have to like drive her back like 12 hours um, and have you do it. How much would it be? And it was so much less. <laughs> So much less. So I went back to that vet and I was like, hey, here's the deal. Um, you know, is there anything else? Are there any other options? Because, I mean, I'm going to be honest, I'm, I will be having the surgery, you know, at, at my, my vet in Missouri. It's like a fifth of the cost. Um, and they said, well, I mean, I guess we could try giving her a laxative. <laughs> really? We didn't mention that before you told me <laughs> the only option was surgery. Sure enough, I gave her a laxative and she crapped like the, I don't know, the next morning really quickly. So that was so frustrating. And in general, you know, I've lived in New York, I've lived in Los Angeles, I've lived in Chicago, I've lived in San Francisco. In general, uh, I will avoid uh, city veterinarians at all costs. Um, not only are they more expensive because of the cost of living and where they are, but I've, I've, I'm going to get in trouble here. Everyone's going to have an opinion and some comments about this, but I do feel like some veterinarians in the city uh, take advantage of city folk who maybe don't know any better. <laughs> um, and it's no one's fault except for those smarmy veterinarians. Um, but I mean, that's, I'm not saying that all veterinarians in large cities are, are naughty. <laughs> but I, it, I, know, I know that it happens at least a little bit because I have a few stories uh, exactly like that. So uh, I'm rambling, but I will avoid uh, veterinarians in large cities at all costs. Hey, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about with my pets. Those are my expectations. I anticipate a little bit of a rough start with Patty. I think she's going to take a little bit of uh, time to get used to Earl. I think she might have a tough time with the litter box. Oh, hi, Sugar. Oh, look who it is. Hi. Oh, they can't see you. Oh, can they can't see you. There she is. Hi. <laughs> That's Lily. She's not going with me. I wish she could. I'd steal her in a heartbeat. Okay. Anyway, what was I talking about? Um, oh, I think Patty's going to have a rough go of it. I know. I'm excited to see you too. I think Patty's going to have a really rough go of it, but she's going to get settled in and she's going to love it once we get on the road. She loves to explore outside. So I'm really excited to be boondocking in some gorgeous, you know, really... Uh, wild spots because I'll feel comfortable opening the doors and letting her roam about. She won't go far away, but she will love just like hanging outside the door and just, just hanging out and prowling around. She's very adventurous despite how skittish she uh, usually is. Uh, and Leroy, I think he'll be fine. My biggest concern with Leroy is that he is going to get uh, like get away from me somewhere super remote 
<laughs> and I'm just gonna have to park until he comes back. He'll come back, but it'll be a while. So that's my plan, guys. It's probably a little naive, but it's the best, <laughs> it's the best that I have so far. So, you know, you watch out in nine months, I'm going to have a follow-up video and we'll find out just how naive I am. <laughs> <laughs> or was, uh, and how my ideas panned out. Maybe it's gonna be easier than I think. Probably not. Bye. Did I just hear you say that you desperately want access to insider information and special perks? Well, check out my Patreon page right here. And don't forget to subscribe right here, or just watch another video right here. Do, uh, you know, do all the, do all the things, do them all. <laughs>